my work as a barrister and have been doing so for the last five years, um, I work at a human rights set of chambers and I practice mainly in criminal defence, um, civil actions against the police and international law. So my practice ranges or encompasses offences uh, including terrorism, homicide, um, serious violence, drugs and large-scale frauds. Uh, from an Islamic perspective, um, women are encouraged to enter into the legal arena, um, not only because women are intellectually equal, but also because um, it's recognised that women are more likely to inject um, an element of empathy um, and thereby giving recognition to the human elements of the of the justice system. I certainly try and incorporate that approach into my work um, and I find that a little empathy goes a long way. It helps people understand the objectives of the justice system and it certainly helps me to do my job better. Islam came at a time to a society that was engaged in the worst types of degradation of women. Women at that time had no rights. They were treated as, as possessions. Um, the practices and the laws introduced by the Prophet were revolutionary in that for the first time women were given rights. They were given the right to marry, they were given the right to divorce, they were given the right to inherit, um, and they were encouraged to participate both in private and public life. Um, and, and that is the legacy of the Prophet and that is something um, that has con continued throughout the, throughout the ages. When people think of uh, women's status and rights in Islam, um, the whole area is usually surrounded by misconceptions and controversy. Um, the reality is that women continue and have been for a long time participating in all areas of life. Um, in the public arena, in the work sector, they're engaging in, in fields as far as the legal profession, medicine, science, politics, the media, academia.